After pressing in the shaft assembly, you want to turn it by hand to make sure that it turns nice and smooth and you don't feel or hear any drag in there. If there is, then you may have gotten one of those washers off to the side a little bit and it's binding up in there. So you'll want to take that snap ring back out, press the whole assembly back out, check for any damage on those washers and redo it. Now the first thing we'll want to do, make sure that this area is nice and clean, there's no debris on it, and we'll reinstall the G-Rotor. easiest way to do that is to take your pin first, and you may need to hold that in with a screwdriver and put on the inner portion of the G-Rotor. And then your outer portion. And now, when we put this G-Rotor housing back on, you'll want to take some of that hydraulic oil and put it on the inside surface and line up those pins with their corresponding holes in the body. Now it's also helpful to put some oil on top of the G-Rotor and then we'll reinstall the end plate. You'll want to put some oil into that o-ring groove to help hold that new o-ring in place. When you flip it over and put that on. Now we'll put our four Allen bolts back in. Tighten these hex bolts down in a crisscross pattern to approximately 15 foot pounds. Now we'll reassemble the bypass screw. And to do that, you want to take this gasket and thread it onto it instead of pushing it straight on and damaging it. You want to have about four or five threads showing. Go ahead and screw this all the way in. And then install the new washer the new nut, use your 9 16 wrench, tighten that down. After getting this far, you want to turn the motor by hand, make sure that it turns nice and free and it's not bound up and that you don't hear any grinding or anything. If there is, then there could be contamination somewhere. There, there might have been some debris inside of the motor when you put it together. So that's nice and smooth. Um, if it, if you can't turn it by hand, you can put the key into it and then use a crescent wrench to, to turn it and if it breaks loose and then turns smooth, it's okay. If it turns hard, take it apart and check for any problems inside. Now we can install it onto the wet end of the pump. Next we'll put that slinger ring back onto the motor shaft. Make sure that the shaft is free of any oil. If necessary, clean it with alcohol. You want to make sure this shaft is totally dry. Next, we'll reinstall the pump flange. To do that, you want to start your four bolts by hand. And then tighten them down with your half inch wrench. Now we can install the new seal in the 3430-0332 kit is the new seal, the new seat, the new friction ring, and a new o-ring. We'll lubricate the outer portion of the seal seat. We won't be lubricating the seal itself. Put a little oil around the edge. 
and then you want to make sure that the seal seat surface is clean and there are, are no scratches or chips in it. And to install that, drop that straight in and use that one inch PVC pipe. Being careful not to scratch the seal surface. Push it in until you feel the bottom out. And again, make sure that it's clean of any debris. If there's any oil on this pump shaft, make sure you clean that off. You'll notice that the shaft itself has a rough surface. The reason for this is to grab onto the inside of the seal itself. So this will rotate with the shaft. And that seat stays stationary. So we'll use that PVC pipe again install the seal, making sure that this surface is facing down towards the ceramic seat. Put the friction ring back on. The seal will need to be compressed as much as you can get it. Drop your key in. You may need to hold this steady with a screwdriver. Install the impeller. Turn the pump by hand, make sure that the impeller is locked onto that key. And then for the impeller nut, we'll want to put one drop of medium strength Loctite inside of it. Thread it on by hand, and then tighten it down with a 5.8 socket. You don't have to run that down very tight, just get it snug. And then to reinstall the new O-ring, you want to put one side on and then stretch it so it doesn't roll off of it. And now we'll reinstall the front housing. Use your 9 wrench to tighten down these four bolts. Go ahead. The last thing is to reinstall the adapter ports with new O-rings. We we'll want to make sure that the one that's marked tank corresponds with where it says tank on the end plate. We'll use our 1 and 1 16th socket to tighten these down. That's it. This has been the 9303C-HM1C. If you have any further questions, you can call 1-800-468-3428 or visit us online at hypropumps.com.